Chris and Mike at night. He is Mike Knight, up and coming uh, comedian in Chris Chicago. Chris Welsh, but, actor extraordinaire. Yeah. I mean, we're both going places. Uh, in fact, this is so combustible, we're probably going to explode and break up. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. our final show. This is science rockets right it's, here. Uh, I mean, it's a chemistry experiment. Blast off. And it's going to blast off. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, at least you Elon Musk episodes. calling my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're both a couple of dudes in Chicago trying to figure it all out, trying to figure out the vast landscape of mm-hmm. the entertainment business. We all have questions and ideas and theories and how things should sure. be. How things, why things aren't like they are, all that, all that type of stuff. But anyways, glad to see you back. As yeah, always, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it a lot on, on the last show. And I know it's going back a month, but we got to talk about the Oscars. Yeah. Um, so I, a lot of people didn't like it. I, because it was so over the top, so decadent. But I loved Babylon. Any thoughts on it? I hadn't checked it out as of yet but give me the skinny it's hollywood late 20s during the transition between silent movies Mm -hmm. and sound movies so you've got these actors and actresses Mm -hmm. who are making all kinds of money living these lavish lifestyles doing all kinds of drugs having all kinds of parties but all of a sudden it comes to an end because uh, a lot of these guys can't transition. It's the behind the scenes yeah, of right, the, right. the silent and, film. Era. Right. And these guys can't transition mm. to the talkies, to the new wave. Mm. So these are people that were major celebrities on top of the world, owned everything. And all of a sudden, one day, new game in town. <sighs> and so it's, a, and these guys, unfortunately, end up destroying themselves. But the characters and the situations and the stories are all based on real, the, the director, as you guys know, I love Damien Chazelle. Yeah. It's all based on real life, actual stories that happened. And he, this guy gets to the nitty gritty of how decadent Hollywood was mm. and still is, I'm sure. Uh, and how awful it was when that part of it came crashing to uh, to an end. So I just thought he told that story exceptionally well, and that's why that was my favorite. You said that was like in the 20s? Yep. That period? Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, wh- and what is that on? It's on demand right now, or I think it's on Paramount. That period in time fascinates me, man, like the 20s. Like right now, we're technically in the 20s, too, when they start looking back on things. Like I just finished a um I just finished a a, a book called uh, Sin in the Second City right about the Lever District back in like the 30s when it was basically like just a lawless area of Chicago that yep. you were just allowed to do it to the point where like if you got, went down there and got robbed stabbed and all your money took and then you went to court the judge would be like would well, you 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 went to the to the lever district so nice talking to you why, why are you yeah, wasting yeah, my time exactly. you know um two things come to mind to your point and that's true the lawlessness mm. and the vast uh the, that's similar to today and the vast amount of income inequality the rich oh, yeah. are mega rich and super the poor duper. are dirt poor and and we live in an area in an era now where people are buying you know, 200, 300, 400, 500 mm. million dollar yachts. They're like skyscrapers that float. These things are just obscene. Mm. And uh, so there's a lot of that going on, sort of like a modern Gilded Age. Um, and a lot of people suffering at the same time. So I, I definitely agree with your assessment sure, sure. that we're kind of living in that time again. And when people at the bottom feel squeezed, uh, and feel like they don't have a chance and feel like they don't really have a fair shot. Mm. There's where you see violence and danger in the street. There's where people really act out by just shooting things up. I hate to say it, but that seems to be the the end result of yeah, yeah. not uh, feeling trapped, if you will. I don't know. One man's opinion. You're welcome to chime in on that. But uh, Yeah, I, I, I'm like a certain amount of chaos seems like it's always around, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But then, like you were saying, like it all just comes to an end, like in errors and all that other good stuff. Like at a certain point in time, everything just stops, and then it's the new way of doing things, right? 
Unfortunately, yeah, and you're right. And unfortunately, what stopped that era was the Great Depression. I'm not going to say we're headed towards Great Depression. I don't mm. want to say that because that would be bad. But uh, Great Depression, then World War II. And then coming out of World War II, we had a super strong middle class where everyone paid their fair share. And sure, sure. Incomes were much more balanced. It was a much more conservative time in America. And that's what the 50s were and to a certain extent mm. the 60s and all that. And that didn't really change until Reagan in the 80s. So, um, it, like you said, it goes in cycles. Well, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of similarities and telltale signs from a Great Depression and some of the things that we're going through right now. But then you look back, like so back at the, I mean, World War One, we came in late. World War Two, like mil millions of people died just on our side right let alone the the fighters in europe let alone you know the main the main actors and whatnot and so i mean some of the things that we're going through right now just by sheer numbers it's not it doesn't really equal up to that right similarly right but uh i mean when you look back at that they have like war movies and you look back at it with like a sense of nostalgia it's a little right? bit of propaganda in there but yeah i know what you yeah mean. of course like wh whoever's writing the movie they they, they do it i mean you have oliver stone telling you how he thinks about JFK, right? Sure, sure. So uh, back and to the left. So <laughs> if you're gonna watch the movie, you gotta watch Kiefer Sutherland's father. <laughs> Angel Tell Max. you who killed. Oh, you were good. Yeah, you were Cambodia. We were here. We were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy. That was an intriguing character. That was a really intriguing. So when you when you watch like so in real life, they're like violence is bad. This is bad. That's bad. But then if you turn on the movies, if you go downtown Chicago right now, you're gonna see two things. Uh, if you're on Lake Michigan or if you're on Michigan you know, the, the Magnificent Mile or whatever, right? You're going to see everything quadruple the price, and you're going to see uh, tickets to get on a tour bus to go do all the things Al Capone used to do, <laughs> right? That is true. That is true. Like, it always sells. Violence always sells. They talk about the same Valentine's Day massacre. I, it, you could turn on any... Some of my favorite movies are gangster movies, yeah, uh, mafia been, movies. I've been watching The Untouchables a lot the past couple of weeks. Yeah, right? De Niro and uh, Sean Connery's Sean pitch Connery. perfect Irish accent. Pitch perfect. Prepare to do. That's my. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like a wop. <laughs> Bringing a knife to a gunfight. Uh, still better than you. <laughs> the Irish thing. But yeah. what is that? What is that allure to that? Why do we? Why do we downplay it in real life, but then we love it? On, I don't think um, we. Die. I think we. There's a. There's a certain part of everyone that wants to stick the middle finger to the establishment because we all play by rules at the end of the mm -hmm. day. And we know how to do that. We're a civilized society. We know we have to get up and go to work for so many hours, come mm -hmm. home, do this, take the kids to soccer, play by the rules. And we all do that, but it's tiring. It makes it exhausting. Mm -hmm. And everyone deep down has a fantasy of sticking their middle finger to the man, to the rules. Mm. So guys like Al Capone are loved. They're loved yeah. because they're the ones going, this whole thing sucks, man. I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing it with my own rules. That's why I think a guy like uh, uh, Al Capone is such a, is, is, is beloved in that sense. And if I'm being truthful, I think that's, that explains a lot of the Trump phenomenon. He's the mm -hmm. guy that sticks his middle finger and says- Draining the swamp. Not. Yeah. He's the one that says, this isn't working. We're going to mm. do it my way. And people go for that. People, right. There's a, something inside everyone. That Robin goes, Hood. Yeah. Even though he's not really. I mean, come on. But you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, you know, isn't there a part of you that would just like to say, fuck this, man. Fuck this right. waiting in line on stage, uh, trying to get my five minutes on this show, on this show, on this show. Mm. I want my own fucking Netflix show. This yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want that. You don't want to, you know, it's like hierarchies and ladders you have to climb. Yeah. Isn't there a part of you that would just like to say, fuck that? I'm, I'm, come on. I'm, that's, a, that's a comic's job is to say, fuck that to everything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, but it, I think it's in it's in everybody for the most part, right? It's the anti-establishment yeah. thing. But I, it's just we're bathed in hypocrisy. <laughs> yes, we are. Every single one of us. It's a question. Because the moment you complain about anything, 
and then you, you... <laughs> right is it is it a, the whole point of human existence a, a question of how much can you manage like how yeah, much yeah. can you take oh yeah, yeah. You might have a high tolerance for it and be able to you know i like my job i like coming home to my wife i got a great wife maybe you luck out yeah. you got a nice wife and kids you yeah, yeah. fun to be around and, you know you, there's little breaks in there that you get you know life yeah, gives you breaks i mean you know here and there not all the time but yeah. You know, when you find the right girl and you settle down and get married, that's a break, you know? And, sure. You know. Well, 98% of the things about being complained about in America right now, anywhere, is because we, we don't have to look for water. <laughs> we're, we're not living... <laughs> we don't have to yeah, look yeah, for... Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we, uh, yeah, so we have shelter. We don't have to look for water. Yeah. You can buy it in bottles at fucking Costco. You buy it and you can buy it in uh, bottles, or you can just walk up to the side of somebody's house. That's right, a house with four walls and a roof, <laughs> and you can turn on their host picket, and they'll just pour in your mouth for free. Yeah, water. That is so yeah, scarce yeah, yeah, in yeah. other parts of the world. Sure. That we don't even think so. About. Whenever you turn on Twitter or uh, freaking uh, TikTok or uh, TMZ and you hear somebody complaining, it's because this is the, the, the easiest time ever in life. Agreed. Ever, 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 ever. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Period. If you can't make it happen here in America in 2023, it's safe to say oh, yeah. you're never you're you're hopeless. All four um, things that you complained about today are meaningless. <laughs> okay. My friend and I have this... Uh, have this uh, I have this fucking thing going where I flew Spirit Airlines a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, and if yeah. you fly Spirit, like there's American United, the top notch, and then there's Southwest, and then there's Spirit yeah. Airlines where you just get the immigrants, the oh, poor, sure, sure. the poor. These people don't even wear jeans and a, and sure, a hoodie. Sure. They wear the sweatpants to work, you know. The slides. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I, and finally I complain. I called my friend up to complain. I said, look, dude, I cannot fly Spirit Airlines. There's something about being around that kind of group of people. Yeah. I just can't do it anymore. Sure. And my friend goes, yeah, in other words, if this were 2,000 years ago or so many thousand years yeah, ago, yeah. you would have been eaten. Yeah, you're yeah. not smart, and you don't know what the true. f you're doing. And dinosaurs would have gotten you oh, yeah. by now. That's his theory. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree. Complain. Not you or me, because we're smart. Sure, but, but dinosaurs would have gotten a good chunk of people up. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could complain about f f magically flying through the air, <laughs> <laughs> but in a plane where the seats don't move back a little bit, somebody's running for a day and a half to catch food. I know. I should <laughs> that this, blows my mind, though. Spirit Airlines, I could do it for maybe a 48-minute flight from yeah. Chicago to Detroit, but I flew to Tampa. Mm. It's this for two hours. It's horrible. It's this for two hours. It's, yeah. You're like, I got to take a dump, but I can't. I need a cup sure, of yeah. coffee, but I can't. I'm dying of thirst, but I oh, can't. It's the worst. I just got to suck it for for two hours. Oh, it's God. not that easy. I and mean, you're right. In modern times, there are far It's a Dodge Dart with wings. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to try to stick. <laughs> and you're trying to try to stick. And Denzel Washington uh, from flight is the pilot. He's <laughs> drunk. Ah, uh, he just slammed his 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 <laughs> swearing off mini. Yeah. Yeah, the vodka. Right? Oh god. Yeah, she didn't drink the vodka. I drank the vodka. I drank the vodka. That that, that threw me off though. Whenever I watch like the future movies and they don't show, because right now we're kind of living in the future. They got rockets that can blast into space. Come back. We got people living in space right now, right? We got people living underwater right now. We got holograms. We got laser guns. We got all that. But then we also have people. We also have people that haven't been contacted by other human beings that are literally catching their dinner with a sharp piece of wood tonight. At the same time, these things are both happening right now at the same time. But you never see that in future movies. In the future movies, everything's all future. And you've got people in certain neighborhoods of Chicago that have never been to downtown Chicago. That oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do you tweet? What are you on? Do you tweet or, or follow people? I, w I go on Twitter to to get like the most i think twitter's the most up to date what's Who's going it? on Who's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but I, I just can't i can't i can't, I can't text the world <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> for what? <laughs> and hope There's for a reply. There's nothing out there that's so important that's worth texting the world. There's four people that I, I haven't that I, I'm supposed to be texting right now, but you know I get distracted and I'm I'm gonna text everybody on the planet. Yeah. 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 And what? What are you gonna tell? What, what you had to eat? <laughs> yeah. Vacation? How uh, great it was? Oh, the Democrats are great. The Republicans are yeah. bad. Well, oh, okay. There's a new perspective. I don't like your guy. My guy's yeah. better. Yeah. It's like worldwide wrestling. But yeah, it's yeah, politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I just can't. There's something that's so childish about it that I, I, I even feel yeah, stupid yeah. doing it. And I know there's intelligent people worth following. I know comics on, on Twitter that are really funny and doing this and that. Yeah. But there's something about it that I just go, I'm out. Can't do it. Can't it's a whole thing. You, it's it's a whole thing. Like you come in and you're a white belt, and I just don't want to go through Twitter's karate class and earn my black belt. Like it takes too. It's too much. It's too much. I could be doing something else with that time. But I do spy. I do like. I do like looking in. Yeah. Yeah. You even noticed anything? You've seen anything? I every now and again I check it for some reporters that I follow, some really good yeah. journalists that have some insightful things to say. I follow a couple of those, but other than that, I just... so what I like to do is I like to follow the people that I agree with, and then I like to follow the people that I can't stand. Interesting. You give yourself the whole perspective. See, not a lot of people are smart enough to do that, to get the whole story. If I, if there are certain people that I watch, and I, this makes me sick, and I have to stop myself from turning it off, but I'm like, I need to hear this because they're a representation of a group of people who don't think like me, and I want to know what the hell they're watching. Wow. You're very interesting. You're mm. well-evolved. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta know yeah. <laughs> it's like giving access to the ladies locker room <laughs> you gotta you gotta listen in like, what are they what saying are they talking? <laughs> they're not talking about me anyway. they're not having the same conversations going over the men's all right well let's get on to something uh kind of interesting okay. in chicago we just had the easter holiday uh mm. people of a certain religious faith Catholicism or mm -hmm. whatever. Springtime work does represent rebirth, renewal, yeah, uh, new beginnings, things like that. Yeah. You partake in anything of those beliefs, or do you? Uh, do you? Uh, how do you feel about spring? Like to me, it's uh, it's it's a really great time in Chicago. It, mm -hmm. It's eighty five degrees out. It's hot out, mm -hmm. but you've got a lot of good stuff coming up this year with the series of films you're doing. Stand up's yeah. still going good. Uh, Chicago land later on this year, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. How do you feel, man? It's going to be a great year. It's the rebirth, man. The, the, the seasonal rebirth is one of the most beautiful things about Chicago being, yeah. being that city in the Midwest that has to deal with, you know, you got those, those other people on the East coast, but I mean, Chicago is like really where people get their hands dirty. So now that it's going to be springtime. It's a lot of hustle and bustle. You're going to be able to find out exactly who was putting in the work. In yeah. the wintertime, uh, yeah. laying that proper foundation, and they're ready to really take off now. If you're just now taking off, yeah, hey, you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what the winter's for, you know? Well, I can't believe it was just a few weeks ago when we saw you out in front of your studio, and that was a cold winter day. Snow yeah. was coming down. It was a Saturday. Yeah. It was cold and miserable. And yeah. now it's 85 and sunny. But you were doing what? Like you said, you were laying down the work. Uh, my man here was uh, shooting his first uh, film. It was a great success. A lot of hard work. That first one's never easy. Uh, who, but you had some nice influences. So why don't you tell me who influenced you on that uh, on that that very first one you did? I saw some Tarantino, some Guy Ritchie. Yeah. Uh, what were you going for there? A little Elmore Leonard. Tell me what you were shooting for there. I actually really appreciate the framework that Tarantino laid out, where he he didn't really give you carte blanche, but he absorbed so much from so many different people yeah, yeah. that he can pull from. And, yeah. he, and he didn't try and hide the fact that he was doing it, right? Right, right. He like was that, a, it was an homage. To, exactly. Right, so there's right. thievery and then there's like an homage. Yeah, there's a very I fine agree. line in yeah. that. He didn't try and change it so much that it looked like it was his, right? Yeah, it wasn't a what, what did Vanilla Ice do? He was like, nah, that first beat, you know, is different than my beat on that Vanilla Ice song. But no, he, he does it blatantly to the point where it's like hey i'm paying homage but you can see where i got my influence from right yeah. and um 
I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cinephile, so I, I take a lot of... Uh, uh, take a lot from a lot of people. Yeah, or, you know, I'll see something that'll line up into my head. I'll be like, oh, I love that part from that one thing. Let me, like, when you're acting, are you pulling from, so are you just letting it pass through you? I'm letting it pass through me. I'm just channeling emotions and thoughts. Mm. I don't know. Uh, there are certain things uh, from certain actors that I do borrow from every now and again, but by and mm -hmm. large, I'm in the moment, I'm present, and uh, I'm reacting how I'm reacting emotionally, mm -hmm. sometimes intellectually, but mostly emotionally. And just playing and having fun it's really simple yeah i would have to i would have to borrow like i remember um I, uh, uh metro you remember that movie metro when eddie murphy tried eddie to murphy. be serious yeah 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 and there was a, he i saw him on an interview and he was like whenever you see me being serious and i'm holding the gun he said i was doing an impression of bruce lee like with his eyes and all that stuff you know like if i ever get to doing some if i ever get to doing some acting i'm, I'm gonna steal the uh Denzel, you know how Denzel, he'll close his mouth, but he never like puts his teeth I together. Love him. I love him. I you gotta, him. you gotta, you gotta, I, I gotta so borrow many, from there's people. There's so few people that can pull do what he does because he is, number one, big physical presence. Like, oh, yeah. Big, yeah. sexual dude. Mm -hmm. Strong, big. Like, he's in flight when he's laying in, in those hotel rooms and those beds. Big dude. That guy's yeah. 250. He's gotta be. He's gotta be. He's Looks stacked, cute. Stacked, too, yeah. Yeah. So. I love Denzel for that reason. Going back to, uh, to Tarantino, I'm going to leave you with a little uh, something to think about for okay. movies and for life as we're getting set to wrap up this episode. The credit roll on the mm. Kill Bill movies. Mm. Think about this for a second. The credit bill the roll of all the... Uh, so she gets the kid, you know, you guys know the spoiler yeah. and all that, so she ends up with the kid and all that kills Bill. Anyways, the, 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 the credit roll is all the, everybody that appeared in the both of the Kill Bill movies. Mm -hmm. And then you realize as it goes through all the actors, you know, their, their little vignette and thing like that. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, you realize that all these people she had to go through were against her. And there was really very, very few people that were in her corner. So if you go through and look, look at the credit roll with all the different characters, other than the instructor, and maybe Bill's mentor, no one else was on her. Oh, and the guy that helped her with the sword, Turi Hanzo. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying, uh, 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 you're saying John Wick is really Kill Bill 4? I'm saying that as you go through life, uh, and I'm saying this because you're starting out as a comic and a filmmaker, and I've been trying to do this for a while. I'm saying that as you go through life, life is like that. There's going to be a whole force of people that don't care about your career mm. don't care about where you're trying to go don't care if they help you don't care where you know how it ends up for you they're ambivalent but they're not going to help you or maybe they're even against you mm. and then there's a handful of people in your corner a oh, yeah. handful of dudes you can really count on in your corner that can help you get to where you want to go. You don't need a lot of those guys uh, you need a couple of soul brothers gotta hold on to get through life and hold on to them I'm proud to be yours, man. I think you're going places. Kinder spirits. And Likewise, kinder Chris. spirits. And that's what I'm saying. Most of the world doesn't care. But if you find a few people that do, yeah. you got enough to go to war. You're going to be a part of the uh, movie project we got going up, right? Absolutely. It's on camera. Yeah. So all good stuff. Uh, at Mike Knight. God, I love this guy. Uh, at Chris Couch. Scotty Anderson. Uh, at Scotty Rocks. At the Dog and Pony Show TV. At the Dog and Pony Show. And we have a new person. And we have a new person. Let's put her back on. Lee. Lee. You're doing a great job. What's your at? She Smart. makes us look like rock stars. Thank hey. you, Lee, for your work on the live. Can you give them a quick bio? Uh, Yeah, I'm a local Chicago artist. Well, I'm not from Chicago, but I live in Chicago, and I can be found on Instagram at lovelybeing, L-O-V-E-L-E-E, -E -E, being. Um, and yeah, I'm a multi-disciplinary multi artist, so I create everything. There's no limits on what I make. Mean. Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're yeah. the third person there you that told me that. Yeah, it's real. It's on. Shit's on. Yeah, she said uh, multidisciplinary artist. Uh, uh, you know, she whoop you with the belt. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. whoop you with the pole. We were talking about <laughs> science earlier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's good. Very smart. Very, uh, very technically, Hands technically on. proficient. She's killing it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heat. Uh, Ooh, uh, <laughs> All right, thanks, Lee, for joining the team. Glad to have you. Thanks, Scotty, as always. Uh, that's Chris and Mike at night talking movies, talking life, and how they uh, are intertwined. Thank you, Scotty, for doing another great show. 
Uh, he's my Chris. Let's go.